Okay, awesome. So first of all, welcome to the individual athlete briefing for this year's Continental Cup. Um, we're very excited to have all of you. We've got a lot of people on here today. Um, we've got some good tests planned for you and a fun little format. You know, I know we would all rather be doing this in person together, but I think this is going to be fun as well. So congratulations for being selected to represent your country. And we're very excited to, to see you compete. So let me just kind of set a couple ground rules, um, sort of talk about the flow of how this is going to go. And then I'm going to turn it over to Anders, who's going to talk for a little bit. And then Veronique, who's going to take you through the actual workouts and movements and standards. So I have put everybody on mute. Please stay on mute. Um, Veronique will at some points give you a chance to ask questions. You can either write it in the chat. So if you kind of, if you haven't been on Zoom before, if you scroll, use your mouse and just kind of hover over the bottom, a thing should pop up. Uh, if you're on your computer that says chat, you can just click there and you can send a chat to the whole group. Um, so you can ask your questions through the chat. If you want, you can also raise your hand. There's a little button, I think it's under participants that allows you to raise your hand. If you do that, we'll know you have a question and then we can unmute you to ask it. Um, but the chat might be the easiest way to go on that. So she'll stop at certain points and give you a chance to ask questions. But other than that, please stay on mute um, and we'll make sure we get everybody's questions answered. Um, that's kind of the biggest thing, I think. The other thing, you know, since we do have, we've got 93 people on here right now um, and hopefully we'll stay under 100 because we get capped at 100 and I don't want anybody to miss this. Um, but because there's so many of us, it actually, will be a little easier to help prevent lagging of the videos if you guys, most of you do, but if you have your videos off. Um, so that'll hopefully help us prevent having things slow down and will allow this to, to continue to run smoothly and uh, you'll be able to hear everybody. I think that's it for me in terms of how this is gonna go. So I'm gonna turn it over to Anders now. Uh, Anders is the Secretary General of the IF3 and he is also the event organizer uh, for the Continental Cup. So he's gonna talk a little bit just about the technical side, the streaming score submission, right? That kind of stuff, this stuff is super important. So make sure you're paying attention to this part as well. All right, with that, take it away, Anders. All right, thanks a lot, Gretchen. Um, hi, everybody, good morning, uh, good day, good afternoon, good night. I don't know what time zones you're in. Uh, but so cool to see all of you people in here, 94 people right now. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this event that we've been planning. Like Gretchen said, this is, um, or some, this is the first time we do this. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we did the World Cup, which we did live, uh, but that was for masters and juniors. And this is the first time we do an online competition that is uh, for the elite athletes and national teams. So we're really looking forward to see some pretty amazing performances this weekend. Um, yesterday or last night, I emailed to each and every uh, team manager, I emailed the uh, athlete information package. Basically everything that you need to know is in that package. Um, all the details about recordings and um, where to put the TO and your equipment and, and links to whatever you need will be in that um, PDF that I sent you. So please make sure that that you, you read it. And like we said in the email, we did not send that uh, information to the athletes. We've been only been sending it to the team managers. So it, it's up to the managers to make sure that the athletes uh, read it, understand it and, and abide to the rules. In it. There are a couple of things that are really, really important in that. And those are the time slots or the deadlines that we put in there. So. The time, the deadline for score submission will be 15 minutes after your um, event is over. That is a sharp deadline. So exactly, it, you know, 15 minutes after you've done your, your workouts, your TO must submit an email to us with all the scores in it. It's just a piece of text. You don't need to show us, uh, scan the scorecard or show the scorecard in any way. I just need a line, test one, five minutes, whatever seconds, test two, blah, 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 and so on. Send it to the email that we've put in the uh, PDF um, and, and that I will receive it and I will probably uh, be quick to reply that, that I got it. 
when that is done, the first thing you do is you do not go home and take a, take a nap. The first thing you do is upload the video. The videos will be about two hours long, so it will take some time for you guys to upload. So please make sure that you do that immediately after you're done as well. Uh, the WeTransfer link that we put in, it's a, we have a pro account, which means that you guys could upload up to 20 gigabytes uh, files and without, you don't need to create a, the account or you don't need to do anything. You just go to that link and you just upload uh, a huge file with whatever, whatever is in it. Um, as soon as you do that, you will get a confirmation email from WeTransfer that says uh, what time and files you've been uploaded. And just uh, make sure to write your names and countries in the message. So I know who, who sent it. So what we're gonna do, the, um, we're doing this because we want to do something that looks a little bit more pretty than we did for the World Cup, because we had the issues in World Cup with athletes. Um, they had poor connections. So sometimes in some of the sessions, we had basically no athletes working because we couldn't see anything because internet connection was bad. So we want to make you, we want you to record things instead and send it to us. And we will try to put things together with some graphics on and some leaderboards and some, some commentary as well. Um, that also means that in some of the sessions, not everybody will be visible because in some sessions we have 27 athletes and it's gonna be very, very small athletes if you try to pack 27 of them into one, uh, to one screen. So we will be picking and you know, choosing and seeing uh, you know, whenever there's a race or a big lift or something that we try to highlight that and we try to talk about. So we're gonna do a sort of a TV production thing and see what happens. Um, of course, you um, afterwards we could also we were thinking of we might be we might publish all the um, all of the videos to YouTube so everybody can watch them. We're also going to do some editing, so we are actually going to cut out the breaks in between the sessions. So we were not going to be we won't be showing all all two hours because we will cut it out and just just to make it a, a better production as well. Um, Specific, a question from Michel, um, specific video quality. Well, um, we can handle 1080. So, um, so if, you, if you do you know, HD, that's fine. If you do 720, yeah. I mean, that's, that's gonna be good too, um, but not, not anything less than that, please. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so please make sure that you have all the times that you've seen them. All the times that were written in the document is Central European times. So you have to translate that into your own time zone. Um, that's because I'm in Europe. So that's why I put those times. Um, also, I would like you in the chat now, I'm gonna put a link, which is the leaderboard at Box Peak for this event. Um, some of you have said, have previously said that you will bring three plus three athletes, but then I only got, you know, maybe three male names and, and or I didn't get all the names. So um, I just need you to check on the leaderboard that all the athletes, uh, all your own athletes are in because I've sort of registered all the names uh, that I have now, except for the teams. I only did, did one, um, one team name uh, for that. So I, I will add the other athletes. But please make sure that you have all the individuals uh, in there. Uh, okay, what should we send immediately? Can you repeat, please? Bad connection. Okay, so you need 15 minutes after the workout, you need to register the scores in, in the email. And immediately when you're done with that, you need to upload the video to the WeTransfer. It all, it's all in the athlete package. Um, I don't think I have much else. Um, well, I just I can just tell you. Um, so uh, teams will perform on Friday, but we will show them uh, YouTube on Saturday. Women will perform on Saturday, but we will broadcast that on Sunday. And men will perform on Sunday, but we will broadcast that on Monday, because we need time to edit and put on commentary and stuff. So hopefully, um, we will be able to do it like that, unless everything breaks down. Um, I don't think I have anything else besides that. Um, there's a question, is it necessary to make a backup recording in case the stream is cut? It's not a stream, it's a recording. That's what I'm saying. So you record on your smartphone 
but we recommend that you also do another recording. So maybe you have two phones recording it in case, in case one of them breaks down or you run out of batteries or run out of um, memory in the phone. Uh, so we recommend that you use two phones for recording. Um, any more questions? Uh, we timers are available. Are, uh, we will make them, but don't use them for the, for the phone that you record and send. Don't put the wee timers on that one because that, that's going to ruin the, um, the broadcast when we edit it. So if you want to use the uh, wee timer for the secondary phone or secondary recording device, that's fine, but not for the, for the primary one, please. Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. So landscape. Uh, what if the video file is too long, too big? Um, well, it's not going to be too big for transfer. It might be, so you need to make sure that you have space on your phone. Transfer, you can uh, upload up to 20 gigabytes when you do the transfer and you have two hours to do it. If you get into trouble doing it, if you have issues with uploading the video or anything, you need to email me as soon as you are in trouble to let me know so that I will know that I am waiting for it. If you do not email me or you do not send the file, you will be out of the competition. Uh, too big to send, it's not gonna be too big to send. 20 gigabytes is a lot. Uh, we will have the link where to download the video. No, the link to upload the video is in the document that you have received. Uh, yeah, that's also case. And uh, Mo, like Mo says, have your phone hooked up to power. That's also in the document. Yes, you should have the phone connected to a power source because two hours of recording will drain your battery. Um, yeah, we transfer is up to two gigabytes normally, but we have a pro account. So we have 20 gigabytes, that's fine. It's also in the file. Uh, bum, bum, bum. No, you cannot record three athletes with one camera. Each athlete needs his, his and her, or her own camera, except for the team. So individual athletes, I need one video recording for each athlete. You do not need a timer visible um, because we will sync and because everybody is running things on their on the same clock so everybody is doing you know start at zero they work to 12 and then they do the rest and we're going to sync sync that when we edit so everybody will be on the same time and we will see um also and just like we said for the world cup the actual score the real score that you get is what is on your to clock or the gym clock it's not what says on the video because we know there will be lag and we know there might be a few seconds off sync or whatever but the official time that you get is what is on your um, TO clock, you know, gym clock. No, we will not review the, the standards because there is no chance. We, we don't have, uh, there's no way we can do that. So that's why we trust you, uh, everybody, to to have video that has gone through the, the uh, online course and that is fair and just. Loading of scores. You have 15 minutes. Or basically, I mean, since the workout is one hour and 48 minutes, you have 15 plus 12. So you have 27 minutes to watch the score. That should be sufficient for it's just six lines of, of um, text. Uh, Athletes, if two individual athletes are in the same gym and they are both competing, they actually should be doing it at the same time because they should start, start at the same time. Um, and let's see, but we need different cameras and we want them, the cameras to just, if you have two athletes working out, we have two cameras, we want them to just one athlete per camera to be seen. So we don't get another athlete running into there. And like we said, we you saw the space that we did for you guys, six by six meters. We want them to stay in that area as much as possible. Uh, music allowed of the recording. Um, you can have music. Um, it doesn't have to be really, really loud. 
um, because if we see if it's too loud music or some, we will we will actually mute that when we do the editing. But it's always it's always good to get some background noise um, because it makes it more loud. Um, Martin says using the time uh, at the gym timers wise, I do not think that any timer will go to almost 120 minutes. They usually cap at 100. That is true, Martin. Thank you. Uh, score sheets, is it in the file? Yes, it is. Score sheets are, it will also be uploaded to the website this week. Uh, we upload the scores to Boxpeak. No, you will e email me the scores. It's in the info package where to email. Uh, David suggests that you can do an interval of two by, two by 60 minutes running up or similar. That's, that's a good. Um, that's a good advice as well. I think you guys can manage the timers. Any more questions on the technicalities? Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Veronique. She is our head technical official. And she will um, talk about movements, standards and flow. Take it away, Veronique. Hi, guys. So uh, welcome again, and I'm Veronique. I am also a Canadian Functional Fitness Federation president. And also, as Ender has said, I'm also the um, head TO at IF3. Um, since my first language is French, I will make sure that my English uh, looks and looks good and, are, and is clear to heat so you can understand um, very well. So. I'm going to share actually my screen with, oops, that's not this, it's this individual, share that. Great. So I'm going to put it in slides. Great. So Today's briefing all about flows of the work, uh, flow of uh, the event, flow of the workout, and then um, a standard movement. It's the way I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna look first at the whole event as the flow, and then test by test, we're gonna go through flow of the workout and then standards. So I'm gonna ask questions, if you have questions part by part, so we're gonna be easier that way. And um, if you have any questions so first slide is um what is about uh, what is all about today that you have two links uh on the screen right now it's one of the uh, the links is on uh, if3 uh, website is for the movement standards and the other one is for the competition rule book so competition rule book is as fair play make sure you have shoes in your feet. Um, we have seen many, many qualifiers uh, from the masters and teens that they didn't put shoes from some test. You must wear shoes. Sorry, guys. Um, if you want to take a look at this prior to the event. And first, let's see now the uh, flow of the workouts. So this is all of your event of 100, uh, an hour and 48 minutes. So this one is endurance. It's a 12 minutes workout. We have 13 minutes rest. And then strength, it's a seven minute workout from 25 to 32 and with an eight minute rest after that. Test three is body weight, five minutes workout with a 15 minutes rest. Skills, eight minute with a seven minute rest. And mixed model, it's 15 minute workout at an hour and a half, uh, 15 to uh, an hour and 30 minutes rest 15 work uh, for 15 minutes and then your last test is power it's a three minute workout and then you will be done after an hour and 48 minutes that is pretty straightforward i think easy to understand any question on the flow of the event no we are good to go with endurance so endurance is a 12 minute workout. It's a workout four times, so 12 minute time cap. 
your score will be total time that your TO is recorded. So if you finish your workout at 10 minutes 32, your score is 10 minutes 32. Cool. So for time is 150 double unders, 750 meters row, 150 double unders, 750 meters row, 150 double unders, and then time. Quite straightforward. So jump, row, jump, row, jump, and that's pretty much it. So for that workout, you must have a concept to a rower and the TO must reset your um, rower after each, after each set of rowing. Is any question about the flow of this workout before we're going through the standards? I think we have a question. Yep, you got one question about flow. At the start of the event, can you have the rope in your hands? Uh, I'm gonna start rope on the ground. Uh, and then let's see, is that, Stephen, do you have your hand up? Is that a, a question? Sergio asked about starting to row, should the athlete have his feet on the row or can he start rowing with his feet on the ground? Uh, you must be seated. You're gonna, you're gonna see it in the standards, but you must be seated. So your butt must be on the seat of the rower before starting to row and that's it. Um, general question for all the tests. Is it necessary to show the weight of bumpers of, bar, of the barbell, the rower, and so on, or it's the check that the TO makes on his own? Or is, so do you have to show it on the video or is the cheap TO just checking on their own, like that the weight is correct I, and all of that? I can answer, I can answer that. Um, that is, that is uh, between you and your TO to make sure, that's the TO job to make sure that all the requirements that are in the document are met. So you do not need to show it to in the video, but you need to show it or, or um, have a look, look at the equipment with your TO. Any more question about the flow of endurance or the workouts or the events at all? For, I guess this is a flow question. For the row, the athlete must remain seated until the total distance is completed. Right. Uh, do you need to show the monitor of the rower in the video? Nope. Your TO must see. It must see the, uh, the monitor of the rower. And just, just to answer Linda's um, comment there, we film everything. Um, no, we don't want you to move the camera around because that is gonna screw up the editing when we try to put it together. So we want that primary camera, we, we want that to stay on that position that we set uh, so we can make, make a good cut out of it. So if you wanna film it with the secondary camera, that's fine, but your primary camera stays in one place throughout the entire workout. And we just answered that question. Should we video the equipment? No, I just said we do not need to video the equipment. You will discuss that and show that with your TO. It is up, it is between you and your technical official to make sure that you meet the standards. So think of this kind of guys as if more, as if you're at a live competition versus like an online qualifier, right? So if you, you did like so for our online qualifier we had for the World Cup, right? You didn't have to have a TO there. There was no one in place judging you. So you have to show everything on your camera. So we make sure that you did it because no one's watching you. Here you have an official. Their job as the official is to make sure that everything is correct. So you don't need to do it on the camera because you have the official there who's going to sign off and say, yes, I'm putting my name and reputation on the line that this person did it correctly. Right? So that's what you have to think of it more like that. The video is what we're going to use then to make the broadcast, but your, your score is determined by your technical official. Um, 
scoring. How about the scoring if the athlete fails to finish the test one, the time cap? Anders, do you want to talk about time cap a little? For scoring um same as with all other workouts if you do not finish you get um you get one second added for each rep not completed so you will just if you don't finish you will just tell me how much you did and then i will make the calculations so to make it clear guys if you finish the workout in 10 minute 32 you send to anders 10 minute 32 and if you did 50 double unders of the second of the last of the last um, set of double unders, you wrote 900 and you wrote 1850. That would be the total reps you did. Okay. Any more question about flow of endurance? I think that's it. I think you can move on. Great. So standards, you have double unders. So those are typical double unders. Rope, um, I said, will start on the floor. So at the count of three, two, one, no ropes in your hand. Um, ropes must start on the ground. Mo uh, the rope must spin forward in order to count and pass twice. On the, uh, the feet for every jump. So two turns per jump. That's regular um, double unders. For uh, the row, it must be on a concept two rower. Must be, at least must be seated in order to start rowing. So if you wanna put one feet or two feet or try to crank before and then put your feet on, as, as long as your butt is on the seat, you can touch the handle and you must remain seated until you reach the total distance you have to do. And is it the job of the TO to reset to zero um, the rower? Any question about double unders or row standards? I don't see any, I think you're good. Great, so we're moving on to strength event. It is a thruster ladder. It's a seven minute time cap. So for time, you have 21 thrusters at the first weight, and then you must add your own weight for 15 thrusters heavier, and then add more weights for a nine thrusters heavier. Um, the weights are on the screen right now in kilograms and pounds. And you have a seven minute time cap to do this. 21, 15, and nine thruster ladder. You have a rest of eight minutes after. You must uh, use only one barbell. So you're adding your own weight um, during your workout. No assistance, no buddies, no fans helping out putting more weights and the clips must be on the barbell in order to count any rep. So if you do your first 21 thrusters and then you add some weights and forget the clips for the rest of the workout, you'll be granted for 21 reps. So clips must be on the barbell. It's a safety, safety issue, guys. Any question about the flow of this workout before going through the standards? You're good. Great. Great. So for the standards of it of the thruster, it's a regular thrusters. So it's a full squat, uh, front squat with a push press. At the end, um, you can start with a squat clean. That is good as long as you reach. At the bottom of the squat, which is the hip crease must go below the top of the knee. You must elevate the barbell um, directly in overhead, reaching a full vertical alignment. So full vertical alignment is the barbell, shoulders, hips, knees, and feet 
in a straight line in one fluid motion. So no pause at shoulder, but must um, go from the bottom to the top in one fluid motion and no jerk type. So you cannot re-dip um, the overhead press. It's straight or in an overhead position. So your score will be total time for that. Um, any question about the thrusters movement? I think you're good. You don't see anything. Great. Just before going um, forward, I'm lucky I am in my own gym so I can demonstrate a few stuff. So what we mean by vertical alignment is if I'm parallel to the person, I'm going to see like a straight line from your head to your feet. So if you're finished, your thruster is like this. My hips are still closed. Like, I, don't, I don't know if you can see my hips. So you must squeeze your butt to make sure you show a vertical line. It's the same pattern if you don't reach uh, full extension at the shoulders. If you push just a bit in the front, your shoulder are not fully open. Just make sure you go all the way up over your head. Uh, you had one question come in. Yep. Uh, if you can squat clean the first rep of your thruster. So squat clean thruster. Yep. First rep. Squat clean is good. But make sure you don't squat clean the others because the thruster don't need to go on the ground each rep. So the first round, the first rep is good. Um, another question, is there a minimum work requirement? Nope. I think that is it. Cool, so your score is total time at the same as the first workout. If you finish in 5.02, you send to enters 5 minutes 02. And if you did 36 thrusters, you send 36 reps. Um, once the athlete reaches the bottom, sorry, Veronica, one more question. Once the athlete reaches the bottom position, do the feet have to remain stationary or the, could the athlete make steps as long as they don't jerk? Uh, it can make steps. We, haven't, we don't have any rules about feet on thrusters. Um, I, know, I know I have seen some rules about thrusters in CrossFit Games event but it was on a one rep max and not during a workout. So if he, if he is okay to move, if you lose balance or something, that's okay. As long as you show control of the barbell in overhead before lowering down, continue your work. Um, all right, I think you can go on. Yep. So test three is body weight. I hate that workout, actually. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Um, your workout is a five minute, oops. Uh, do you have any question? I've seen. Um, nope, I think they're just chatting. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so your workout body weight is 75 toes to bar per time with a five minute time cap. You'll start this workout at 40 minutes and end it up, of course, at 45. Uh, you have a 15 minutes Rest after it and your score is your total time. Again, if you finish, your score will be a total time. If not, if you uh, have, not minute, have not finished at the five minute time tap, you send and there is the number of reps. Pretty simple this one. Any question about the flow? Great, we're going for the standards. Those are regular uh, toes to bar. So you must start um, vertically from a suspended horizontal bar using a pull-up bar, um, using both hands. And you must be uh, elbow in full extension. 
And then what we call the full extension at the hips is that we need to see your feet breaking the vertical plane. So when um, in the past competition, probably a judge asked you to bring your heels or your feet um, in the back, that shows that your hips are fully open. So the standards is the hips, but we're using the feet to help you reach that hip extension. And both feet much does touch the bar at the same time between the two ends for each repetition count. So the count of the rep is good when the toes touch the barbell. Touch the, not the barbell, but the pull up bar. Any question about the toes to bar? Um, you have a couple questions. So the first one is, is a mixed grip allowed? Yep, it is. Uh, second one, is there a height standard for the pull-up bar? Like how hard, high the bar has to be, I guess is the question. No, but actually I don't just say something, a, uh, a pull-up bar that is too low. Your feet will like swipe on the floor. But um, no, you don't, we don't have any uh, height for the pull-up bar. Um, next one, will it be visible that I touch the bar from the frontal position of the camera? Um, that's more- but That yeah. doesn't matter because it's the TO that, that judges whether you touch the bar or not. It's not the video. Like Gretchen said, remember this is not an online qualifier workout. So we will not do the judging. We will just show you your performance to the audience and your TO will determine whether or not you touch the bar. Uh, I can just hop on and take the next question I saw. Is it allowed to use a different working area, same size camera position, same corner for the bodyweight test? Yes. Uh, if, if you have to move uh, to a different setting because of the, you know, the, the rig is somewhere else, um, yeah, that's fine. As long as you can put the camera sort of the same position that we can see, that's fine. Um, Mo, yes, athletes should always be facing the camera. Um, and then I think we have one more. You guys need a demo? I, um, well, I have one more question for you, Ronnie. Someone asked ta if they're allowed to do tape on the bar with grips. No, one, one or the other. Um, I think you're good. I think you can move on. I think I want to see you? Veronique do the toe to bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, just make sure. I'm oh, sorry. The switch camera. Um, uh, I think it's this one. This one. Yep. So welcome in my garage gym, guys. So just make sure we have all planes free. So it's nine o'clock in the morning. All good? Very Don't nice. <laughs> I have pressure, guys. Richens come from gymnastic. <laughs> um, I think uh, you're good on questions, though. I don't see any other ones. So I think you can go to right. number four. Number four, skill. So you start at one hour. It's an AMRAP, 10 minutes. Oh. Nope, it's not nope. an AMRAP, 10 minutes. <laughs> That's come from another, another side, guys. Sorry. This is the fourth time. So it's five rounds of strict big sit and stand push ups and 20 pistols. So you do the first set of 10 strict and stand push up and then 20 pistols, eight, 20, six, 20, four, 20, and two, 20. And then time, you have eight minute time tap and the rest of seven minutes after that. So you have the height of the deficit here for men and women. And the score is a total time. 
and again if you don't finish uh, in the eight minute time cap you must send Anders number of reps you did I've seen on the right on the right part of the this line you must alternate uh, the pistol so it's left right left right left right any question about the flow of this workout so forget about the AMRAP 10 minutes, it's not there. It's an eight minute time cap. I think you're good. I don't see any questions coming in on flow. Great. Oh. Strict Maybe ones. One. Yeah, strict on the handstand push ups. She's going to go over standard now, but yeah, not kipping. No cap. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh. Question. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to go over standards first, but you got a couple, do you want to go over standards and then we yep. can, okay. You want to go over standards? Yeah. Um, so for the end stand push up, yes, it is strict. So no tipping is allowed. So no momentum created. It's a strict movement. So you must start in full extension, hips, knees, shoulders, and elbows at the beginning and the end of the rep. Um, your head must make contact with the ground or the, the mat you're using. And then you must return at the full extension of the hips. If you want to, uh, and a picture of what we need as Theo is think of a push press and overhead position and turn it upside down. It's what it looks like. Um, your feet must stay within the designing box. We're gonna see the, I've made a box just over here. You see it in the back. So um, that will be your box for this workout. And the only part that can touch the wall actually is your heel. So no butt, no leg, no back, no head. Only your heels can touch the ground through the whole rep. Do we have a question about instant push-ups? Yeah, we got a bunch of questions. Okay, so first one, is an ab mat under the head allowed? Yes, as long as, actually we have um, the setup just behind. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna make it clearer probably a little bit. So this is your setup. This will be your box. So it's a plate and I'm not in a plate. That will be your um, box width. So it's about like 27 inches, which is way more that we uh, use to have like a regular box. So if you use an mat on the ground, I'm gonna take my cake, you must calculate your dip step from the mat or from the inside. So if I take this uh, set up, actually I have two inches and a half, okay? And if I took off my amma, it would be like way more. It's uh, five inches and a half. So if to use an amma or any kind of mat for your head, um, you must measure from your mat and not from the ground. Um. All right, next one. If you get a no rep on the pistols, do you have to go back to the side that was missed? Yes, sir. Um, so if you miss the left, you must redo the left before going because they are alternating. Uh, next question. Any standard on the width for the handstand push-ups? Uh, actually, your box is there. So this is the width of plate, a mat and plate with your, your width. Um, we talk about the feet during the rep. So your feet cannot go, actually I, I, I'm, I'm too small, so I'm probably impossible for me instead of doing a slip, uh, a slip to put my feet outside the box. But you must, your, uh, your feet must remain in the width made from the, the two sides. If I go up, imagine like a line, this, this will be your box. So no feet outside the box and your hands must stay 
on the top of the plate. Um, all right, next one, uh, question alternating on the pistols. We said, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hold your free foot on the pistols? Yes, you can. As long as you don't, the only way you cannot use your hand is to help you push to go out of your squat. Um, next one, my wrist is injured. Can I use the dumbbells or parallettes for the deficit? Well, that's a good one. Actually, I use the plate to make sure that the standards are like the same for everyone. Um, uh, let me think about this one. Uh, I want to make sure that the, the comp is fair uh, to everybody. I know that switching the end position um, make for people some advantage. For myself is not because it's more difficult for me, but I know that some people have to find it easier. Um, I'm gonna think of it and get back with uh, with these guys. Um, another question on the width. Uh, the rule book, the width is typically 91. For strict, we must maintain that width in the case for also the feet. So the width, like running side, is gonna be your plate. So it'll be plate and mat plate, which I think is a little wider actually than the normal 91, but because you have the plates in there, so it's a little bit wider. I don't know if you have, do you have your tape measure there, Veronique, that you yep. can say what the, what it is real quick, if you measure it like the width real fast? So you have like 47 inches. How many? 47, did you say? Yeah, 47 inches. Okay. So 47, I'll figure out what that is in centimeters real quick for you. Um, sorry, it's like 120. Okay, yeah, 120. There yeah. you go. So it's wider than normal, which I don't know if that's necessarily an advantage in deficit, but that's what you've got. <laughs> but I think yeah, I just want to make it simple for you guys so you don't have to draw a line on the play and just put your hands on the plate, no, no, no finger outside. So stay hands on the plate and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, all right, any other, I think that's it. That's, I don't see any other questions. So I think you can move on. I'm keeping that question about the parallettes and I'm gonna go through the, the whole thing and I'm gonna, so mixed model. It's like a big chipper, a big chipper guys. It's for time, it's 80 calorie row and then 80 kettlebell swings with the weight here and 80 burpees over herg. You think it 15 minutes time cap. So pretty straightforward, 80, 80, 80. And then again, you can send the time if you finish a workout or the number of reps if you haven't finished. Question. Um, nope. We have a couple standards questions. Do you want me to hold them or you want me to do it? On the kettlebell swings and then? Yeah, yeah was, on... you got a standard on kettlebell swings question. Uh, and then you got two late questions on handstand push-ups. So you wanna do the handstand push-ups ones real quick? Yeah, we're gonna go back to the handstand push-up. Oops, yes. Okay, so real quick, back on the handstand push-ups. Fingers cannot be off the plates, was a question. Can the finger, yeah. No, actually, I don't think it's an advantage, guys. What? Yeah, so fingers, so fingers cannot be off the plates. Um, can your heels come off the wall on the handstand push-ups? If you, in order to finish the, the rip, you must get back your your wheels on the wall. So yes, can can come off as long as you get back. And then the last one, if you don't use an M map, can you choose how wide the plates should be? If you want to go narrower, yes, but the max was what you say, 120 centimeters, right? Yep. 
Yeah. So no wire. The max is 120 centimeters. So if you're if you have an ab mat, it'll automatically be that way. If you don't use an ab mat, that's fine, but you can't go wider than that. Um, okay, and now we're starting to get questions on. I think that's it for the handstand push-ups. So do you want to go through? Uh, no demo about the handstand. You're straight. You're good about straight. They're good. And there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you can go back to the kettlebell one because we got some questions on the row kettlebell erg one. Yeah. Or Great. Therapy. Um, for the row, it's the same as the first workout. So you must be seated in order to start. So your butt must be on the seat of the rower before wrapping uh, the handle. And you must remain seated until you reach the 80 calories. And that's the rower. <laughs> um, kettlebell swing. Yeah, we don't see uh, a lot of kettlebell swing in um, competition. Uh, so for the rep, um, there is two major thing. Uh, we're gonna go for the, the range of motion about the standards for here. So uh, the kettlebell, the top, the bottom of the kettlebell must reach, uh, must go over the top of your head as the highest point on the highest point of the kettlebell swing. And for the bottom, um, it must break the front plane of athletes thighs. So you must bring the kill being between your legs pretty much. That's pretty much it. So I have a kiwi if you need demo. Um, um, there are a bunch of questions. Do you want to go over the burpees before I read them though? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Sorry. I said there were a bunch of questions, but do you want to go over the burpees before yep. I? Okay. Great. So burpees is real or burpees, guys, chest on ground, chest on ground in prone position. At the bottom of the repetition, you jump with uh, both feet at the same time, but you can land on one or two, as long as you jump with two feet. And if you trip a little bit on the rower, it's all good. You continue your rep. It's a good rep. Um. Okay, a couple questions here. In the jump over the erg, the legs have to pass over the erg. So your legs have to go over. Yeah. Yeah, you can't jump, can't be behind the rower, basically. I so think actually, that means that your, your head must be like closer to the wheel to make sure that your feet jump over the rower and not your head at the height of the seat. So your feet are like um, off the row. Mm -hmm. um, question on the bot, where does the bottom of the kettlebell need to be at the top of the movement? No, okay. So I have my kettlebell guys. I know this is not 24, it's 24. It's the one okay. I have to have Yep. Can you stop sharing your screen before you do that? Because otherwise it's not gonna show on the recording. Uh, yep. Thank you. Great. Everyone, this plan is, uh, I'm not sure. The plan is good. I think I'm going to switch camera here to make sure we see all by move there. It looks like so come move here. We see everything. Make sure. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Homemade stuff. So, kettlebell. good yeah you were cut off a little at the top but we could see that it was generally going over your head <laughs> okay we're gonna do it again so we eye this point
So bottom of the kiwi, just over the top of my head. So I'm not in fully extension. I might be a little bit up front, but it's all good. Um, okay, so we have a couple more questions. I'm just gonna go through. We did that one. Uh, question about locking out the elbows on the kettlebell swing. Do they have to, do the elbows have to be locked out at the top of the kettlebell swing? I must, uh, I'm gonna refer, those are specific to the test. I will refer to, I will refer to the website if we have any more about the kettlebell swing. I don't believe there. No, we have no standards about locking out elbows on the kettlebell swing. So it's the height of the kettlebell and the frontal plane of the thigh. So you must bring your kettlebell swing in between your legs. So that's pretty much it. Okay, here's a, a burpee question, two burpee questions. Yeah. Or can you do the burpee with their back facing the monitor? So with their head facing away from the monitor, I guess is the question. Is there a question? As long as, long as you use no. over. No? Nope. Always facing the camera. Are they At talking least. about the monitor? Yeah, but the since the uh, since they are rowing facing the camera, they must be facing the camera also when they do the, the burpee. So they will be facing the camera at all times. And then the second part of that question was, can you step up if you're doing the burpee, right? Instead of you have to jump over, but can you step up before you jump over? Uh, yes, it's all good. So you don't need to jump back or jump front at two feet. You can step back and step up as long as you, uh, you jump with two feet over the herd. Um, does the bottom of the kettlebell have to be vertical at the top of the movement or can it be facing forward? I don't understand. Uh, do you mean that you're like? Yeah, I think he's trying to say, does it have to be, does the, the bottom of the bottom of the kettle have to be completely upright, which is no, it doesn't have to be completely. As long as the lowest part of the kettlebell is higher than the top of your head, that's good for me. Yeah. Um, another step up and step down burpee question. Jump over the burpee with both legs. Yep. Yep. You have to take off with two feet on that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, kettlebell swing, allow press out at the top. We said, yes, the arms don't yep. have to stay straight. Um, for the burpees, question is on, uh, is it facing the row or lateral, but it's lateral, right? Yep. Yeah, lateral burpees. Um, elbows, we said that, no mention of elbows. Um, Question about the info packet, Anders. The rower monitor is facing the camera, but the athlete, I'm not sure I understand that question. Michael, you have to no, rewrite the, it. The, rower, the monitor is not facing the camera. The athlete is facing the camera. Right. Maybe, okay. I have to come down. I don't know if I understand that. Yeah. So, so the um, so the rower on the on the screen on the um, in the info package is it's uh, I mean the athlete is facing the camera. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So I guess if you just re remember that that the athlete should always be facing the camera. Okay. We got it. I think we're good. All right. No um, if the athlete messes up the jump part, say they step over the rower, or they some they mess up that. Um, I guess they'll just be stepping over the rower and they get a no rep. Do they have to repeat the entire burpee or can they just do the jump over again? Uh, the entire burpee. It's a whole movement. 
Um, I think that's it. I think we can go on to the last one. Great. Last one. Oop. Here we go. Power. So it's the three minute time gap. It's your last one. Probably a more brutal one. It's a 25 round to over end. Short time. So the weights are there for um, guys and ladies. Any question about the flow of the workout? It's one movement, 25 round to overhead before we're going to the standards. So I, don't, the, yeah. I don't see any flow questions. So I think you can go to, oh. Um, Go ahead, you can do the standard. So standards for ground to overhead, you can do clean and jerk or um, any kind any style of snatches. So power clean and jerk, squat clean and jerk, split jerk, push jerk, power jerk, depending on the words. Um, squat snatch, so snatches if you can, no matter what is one or two. And you can mix them also. So you can do a half and half, um, whatever your strategy is. Um, the barbell must touch the ground at each rep, at each start of, uh, at the start of each rep. And then this must finish uh, in overhead position. And as usual, in overhead position, barbell, shoulders, hips and knees, must be full, uh, fully aligned in vertical alignment and elbows, shoulders in complete extension at the same as hips and knees. Any questions about ground to overhead movement? Uh, we had one question that said, can you do snatches and clean and jerks, but you answered that and said, yep, you can do either one or mix them up. Yep. Um, and then we had another question on the kettlebell, but I'll wait a second, see if there are any more ground overhead questions, which it doesn't look like. So back to the kettlebell for a second, is that okay? Yep. Okay, back to question on the kettlebell. It said, um, the standard says clearing the horizontal plane at the top of the swing, um, but then it said that when you demoed, it was more of an American swing. So maybe can you clarify the point that you have to break? Because horizontal plane would be what? Here, I guess? Yeah, it's like if I draw a line, well, actually, I'm going to try it. If I draw a line of my head here, the bottom of the kettlebell must clear that line here. So yeah, I must went like way much higher, but I want to make sure that I clear that line. So. You can go straight to the line, but the bottom of the kettlebell must be over it. Um, so make sure you clear that top of the head. It's not, I wouldn't say Russian is like eye level. So I don't, I wouldn't use the word it's, it's Russian tiny. kettlebell swings because that's only to like, it's not above, Russian is not really above your head and it has to go yeah. above that plane of your head. Yeah, it's kind of in between the American swing, which be like straight over and the Russian that will be at high level. Yeah, and like just in between in the middle. Yeah, so kind make of. Sure the bottom of of the bell clears that horizontal plane. Um, there you go. International swing mo. Uh, we had a request for you to demo it again, maybe Veronique. Yeah. Can you stop your screen share though, if you do that? Yes. I'm trying to make as much as I can. I see old body. I'll make here. I'm gonna try and make here. Yeah, could you show, that's the full American swing. Can you show just what 
the minimum required is so maybe yeah, the right. what we call the medium meal not so high just yeah it's here like yeah, yeah that's good yeah. probably uh, right here yeah there you go that's, that's a good, good swing yeah mm -hmm. perfect there you go so see if you guys draw like a line straight across your head that bottom of the bell has to just be above what would go straight across so that second, that last demo she did was the good one. Or like, I mean, they were all we good, it, we, but the other one was excessively yeah, we, high, right? <laughs> we, we call it the Swedish swing because it's not Russian, not American, it's neutral. There you go. <laughs> so you're not getting the trademark though. <laughs> um, all right, I think that's all the way through. There you go, I like that. Russian with an American visa. <laughs> Um, someone said full elbow extension for the kettlebell swings and there's no rules about the elbows as long. So if you want to bend your arms, as long as you get that bottom of the bell over the horizontal height of the head, you can keep them. They don't have to be perfectly straight in the elbows. Right, Veronique? Yep. Um, all right. I think that's it for questions. And that was all the tests, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If anyone has any last minute questions, put them in the chat, I did put the document, a Google Drive link to the document way long ago in the chat to the athlete info document when we were having all the questions in the beginning. Um, so make sure you scroll up and click on that. Um, and what else? If there's anything else that comes up, uh, reach out and let us know. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to read Tomas' question, but it's to Anders, so I'll let him read it. Um, <laughs> and I guess that's it, unless Anders, you wanna ask, answer that last question there, or do you want me, I guess we should read it for the, um, for the video recording. Uh, question about cameras, separate video cameras for individual athletes, but other athletes can be seen in the lane on those recordings. Yes, that's fine, Tomas. Yeah, if you have, everyone has to have, everyone competing has to have their own individual camera. But if there's other things in the background, that's okay. I mean, obviously try to make the space as clean as possible because we're going to use the videos for the broadcast. So try to have like as little background distractions as possible just because that's going to be what we're going to put on the live stream. But if there's, you know, other things in the background, you can see other people, that's okay, but just make it also, it should be clear who the athlete that you're recording is, if that makes sense. Yeah, and to, res to respond to that, uh, Tomas, um, yes, I said it, that you could do the other athletes in the same time, as long as you met the requirements. And the requirements are the one that we drew up. So, so the, the athletes that are actually participating in the Continental Cup, they need to reach these requirements with the six by six meters. If you have other athletes doing the workout in the gym at the same time, we don't really care what requirements then they, I mean, where they put their gear because we're not filming them anyway. So if they do it and they make it smaller, um, that's fine with me, but we don't want other athletes to be in the videos um, because that's going to mess things up. Um, I'm sorry, uh, sorry Anders and Gretchen, basically you uh, answered in the opposite direction. So that's my question. If, if we uh, make the layout as uh, described in the document, but still uh, on an individual's camera, you can see other people. Is that okay or not okay? Well, okay. I mean, if you can see them on the outsides, maybe I mean, you see them a little bit, that's fine. But we, like Gretchen said, it should be very clear who, which is the athlete doing it. Okay, because I don't, I don't have the gym layout and the actual required layout in front of me. So I'm okay. not sure it's a problem, but if we have the lanes, the boxes mm. you prescribed, then still on the outside, you can see the other lanes and the other people, that's okay. Yeah, as long as it's, as it's clear who is competing. Okay, thank you. Um, there was, okay. where can we get the video recording from the Zoom call? I think Gretchen, you will post it on YouTube, the uh, video from oh, this, yeah, we'll the this uh, Zoom um, call. Yeah, 
I will post the video recording will go on YouTube as soon as it's done processing and stuff after this. Um, um, a couple other how is, this, that how is the scoring system working? Um, it um, because we have more than 20. Mm -hmm. Uh, I need to get back to you on that one because the scoring system is actually dependent on how many athletes or teams are in each uh, each division or session. So we need to, I need to get back to you, to you on that one, whether we're doing the, the placement or the 100 points. Let's see. Um, Hendrik, that's fine for your question. To answer Mo, in case of safety issue, yes, the TO can move. Actually, it's the only... The only moment that the TO can move bar the uh, piece of equipment is if we have any uh, safety issue like a uh, barbell roll inside of the pull up bar during toe to or something like that. Yes, TO can move uh, the barbell. So, yes, in safety issue, TO can move something. All right. And I, um, I guess that's it, right? I don't see any more question so i will um oh one more is someone taking photo video or photos allowed nope. at, the, at the area absolutely not yeah i keep them out of the athlete just for a safety thing keep them out of the the athlete area you know obviously you're welcome to you know take photo videos post play so your athletes have memories of this that would be great um you know use it to help promote things but just keep them out of the athlete area so that just for the safety of the athletes. And just now a few words, guys, that you can give to your um, TO if um, your TO is not uh, on, the, on the call. It's to, uh, of course, reinforce the standards. TOs are quality control. So athletes are responsible to move well and TOs are in charge to make sure that it moves well. So we're not a uh, counter or no rep caller. We are uh, reinforcing the standards. So make sure you move well and the TOs will make sure to count your reps. Um, of course, they need to call no reps if standards are not met and if possible to show it. So on the camera with the broadcasting and the edition of the video, that will be nice to see if someone has a, a, an OWAP or not. Um, it's TO's responsibility to guide the athletes through the workout. Your workout are like pretty straightforward. So you don't have the, instead of the first one, don't need to move and back and then and to the, the movement or to the other. So, but the athletes can guide the athletes through the number of reps to, they need to do or reps are left. And make sure that the workout, the workout is respected. Uh, the rep count is good. Make sure that the timer is functioning. Also, that's the uh, responsibility of the TO. Uh, you're gonna see on the package some uh, some positioning about the TO. Usually, it's like uh, eight feet away from the athlete at 45 degrees. So, we can that way we can see the whole body uh, moving. And you, if you can help the athlete with the rep. Uh, with counting the five last rep and also it's great for the video where we're gonna edit it and um that's pretty much it there's no you're not a fan Theo is not a fan he's not a coach it's an official so no coaching cue uh during the workout in between i don't mind but during the workout it's no coaching cues and uh, Tip, it's your own personal timer. Um, yeah, we talked about it, but maybe you not use the wee time uh, for your own video, maybe for your backup if you need to, but for, not for the main video. Stay on screen, please. <laughs> we want to see you. And um, just to make sure you don't lose any resting time, make sure you bring all your equipment near your workout station. So you don't have to move like all around the place to get your stuff. So be there earlier, prepare all your stuff at the same place, and then um, it's easier and faster for you to get organized. And um, your team leader are gonna send you all the, the athlete info package. 
um, with all the information of links and um, some graphics, how to set your stuff, uh, the camera, uh, where to put it and everything. So just wait for that. And that's pretty much it. If you go on the YouTube channel of International Functional Fitness Federation, you're gonna also see some videos of the test, which I didn't see, um, I show you, but um, some videos are have been made and they are only like showing you the flow of the workout. So if you need, if you have any question about the flow, you can look at the video, they're showing how as it's moved from the station to the other, but there are not standards movement video, they are just flows of workouts. Any more questions for me? I don't see any more standards questions. I have a, there are a couple of just technical ones I'll read real quick. Um, there was a question about, just so we have, because the recording won't see the chat, a uh, question about athletes getting help setting up for the next workout, and that's fine, right? During the breaks, if you have your pit crew to help you set up, for the next workout, other people can help set things up, move equipment, that's fine while you guys are resting. Um, I encourage you to do that so you can take your rest. Someone asked about um, for the recording. Uh, honestly, I would just use your smartphone and just record it. Not necessarily, we don't have necessarily a certain anything else really to request, just turn it on the phone and film it. <laughs> um, Let's see, what else? Uh, Nicholas, yes, we'll reach out to you about the handstand push-ups. Um, you can take bathroom breaks during your breaks between workouts, that's fine. You don't have to, if you need to go to the bathroom, that's fine, you can leave the frame for that. Um, yes, that's fine. Uh, someone asked about live streaming their performance on Instagram or something. That's fine, that's up to you, right? That's a personal call. Um, you know, everyone in your continental grouping will be going at the exact same time as you. So it's not necessarily like, oh, your results will be leaked and someone could see it later because the other groupings won't be competing against you in this round. Um, so that's your personal call if you're okay with your performance getting out before we broadcast it um, and your scores potentially getting out. Um, so that's your, your personal decision on that one. Yeah, so we're going to, this is in from the document, to make sure that you guys are doing it on the right day. Um, there, we're going to post a code word on the IF3 website about 30 minutes before the start of your time block. So make sure you go to the IF3 website. So at the beginning of your video, we want you to just say your name and the code word. That way we know that you did it in your time block on the right day and you didn't film it, um, you know, last week or something, okay? Um, the times are all on the IF3 website. So someone was asking what time the ladies start on Saturday. It depends on what country you're in. So it's on the IF3 website and the times are in CET, which is Central European time. So you have to convert it to your time zone. If you are confused at all and you need us to double check for you, you just wanna know, just email because we don't want you to miss your time slot. Um, I'll put the link where all the Continental Cup info is into the chat right now. But please, if you are confused about anything, it's better to ask and feel like, you know, annoy us with questions than to be confused and do something wrong and, and regret it later. But the whole schedule is on that website there. I just put it in the chat. Remember, the times are listed in Central European time. So make sure you convert to your time zone to figure out when you go. And if you're not sure, um, email us, reach out and ask if you're not sure about anything, okay? Any other questions before we close this out? I'm gonna say the recording will be up probably in an hour or so, it depends how long it takes for it to process after we end this. Um, but other than that, good luck you guys. It's gonna be an awesome event, we're really excited. Um, and We'll see you this weekend and we'll talk to you soon. So good luck guys. Thank you for your time. I appreciate all of you being here and have a great rest of your week. Uh, yes, the link for the TO to get certified is on the website as well under training. Uh, bye guys.